Father, thank you that your word says that you surround us. Thank you that your word says that like a mother hen desired to gather her chicks together, Israel wasn't willing, we are. Like hungry little birds chirping, God, not afraid as a man to say, I'm a hungry little chick. And my voice and my prayers must sound like little peepings to you, God. Beep, beep, beep. So now we stand on the promise of your word that says, if my people would open their mouths wide, I would fill it. Fill us, Holy Spirit. We stand on the promise that your word says, I will give my spirit to my people when they ask. Thank you, God. Show us your word tonight. May we be completely surrendered as we sang. May it be so. Amen. Um, question. What do you guys think would con- constitute obsession? The, we're going to look at chapter 28 and 29 of the book of Numbers tonight. And I thought about the word obsession because if you look through the book of John, the first 10 or 12 chapters, our Lord Jesus Christ was obsessed literally, with telling people that he was sent. I've not come to do my will, but him who sent me. I've not sent, sent, sent. He says that word, I'm telling you, it's got to be 30 times in 10 chapters. Like, man, he's serious about letting you know that he's not come to do his own thing, but the will of him who sent him. I think Moses' obsession far exceeded Christ's obsession even with letting something escape him. For in the 31 verses of 28 and the 40 verses of 29, he uses a word. So many times, the only English word that we can use to explain it has got to be obsession. Follow me as I show you this obsession. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, My offering and my bread for sacrifices made by fire for a sweet savor unto me shall be observed to offer unto me in their due season. And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire which ye shall offer in the Lord two lambs of the first year without spot day by day for continual burnt offering. The one lamb shalt thou offer in the morning, and the other lamb shalt thou offer in the evening. A tenth part of the ephah of flour of a meat offering, mingled by meat offering, 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 offer, 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 offering, offer, offer, offering, offer, 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 offering, offering, meat offering, bread offering, drink offering, 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 offering. I haven't even gotten one quarter of the way. Just look through it later on. Now we could look at it and we could break it down if we wanted to. Today is more of a message message and less of a Bible study, I'm sorry. But I felt, I sensed, thank you, that the Spirit would have us consider something beside the feasts. We've looked at the festivals many times and I just sensed that the Lord would have us to talk about offering. 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 What is it to offer? Well, the word offering in the original language, in the Hebrew, was a word I didn't know how to pronounce, and I didn't want to make believe I did. But the quite literal translation was, it was three English words, up in smoke. Just like the Cheech and Chung movie, up in smoke. It was consumed completely, it was given over, nothing left. All done, bye-bye, given out, surrendered, offered up. And I thought to myself, Self, are you offered to God like these drink offerings and these meat offerings? And I mean, at one point it was like, in verse 5 of chapter 29, he says, And one kid of the goats for a sin offering to make atonement for you beside the burnt offering of the month and his meat offering and the daily burnt offerings and his meat offerings unto the manna for a sweet savor. In, in one verse, it's like six times, like, okay, I got it. Offering. You guys remember, if you think in New Testament, nine, uh, the 12th chapter of Romans, what does it say? It says, present, offer yourselves a living sacrifice. Paul wrote, I'm already being poured out as a drink offering. 
in perspective of heaven, earth has this blip. And I love the way my pastor used to put it. You look at your, your tombstone, and there's your birthday, and there's your death day, and then there's your blip. And that blip is too true for you are here for so long in light of eternity because we know as Christians and, 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 and somewhat intelligent people that time is not circular. There's no circular of life. It's linear. Linear. You know what I meant. What is it that stands in the way of being offered? We sang these songs, and listen, quite frankly, I'll be honest with you. I come up here and I preach to you guys a lie. That's pretty darn sad, isn't it? If you knew I was sitting up here lying, if you knew my wife was miserable, if you knew my kids knew stuff about me, if you knew I was a criminal at work, if you knew anything about me that made me a liar being up here, forget about God's grace covering me. If I'm up here preaching a lie, you'd be pretty upset about that, wouldn't you? God would be pretty upset about that, wouldn't he? Well, shall I play the music? You know what? I want you to put up there the songs that we just sang. I surrender all. I offer you everything that was played. And this wasn't a setup. He had no idea what the message was going to be. The Holy Spirit knew. Did you just sing a lie? Did I just sing a lie? No easier No better, for if Dustin comes up here and he's not fully surrendered, but he's seeing I surrender all, what is he? He's a liar, a hypocrite. I didn't say that to shame anybody. Myself, my only shame is there, believe me. But we can't. Look, turn please to Luke 7. You won't be coming back there if you want to really do a deep study on that, man. Warren Wiersbe does an amazing job teaching chapter 28 and 29 of Numbers. Um, Luke chapter 7. Luke is after Matthew, right? Luke 7. Pick it up in about the 35th, 36th verse. Where are we at? 36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with them. And he went down into the Pharisee house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. Please give me your attention. A sinner. You know, a sinner. One of them. She was probably, some would say, the prostitute. She was something dirty. And I got to thinking, who would you consider to be the worst sinners in all of history? Everybody says the first name first, right? Hitler, right? Mussolini was pretty bad. Mao Zedong wasn't really a good guy either. Idi Amin was pretty horrendous. I mean, you got some guys right now and... Hmm? What was his name? Genghis Khan was... He was no charmer. Hmm? Nero Caesar, yeah, why don't I think of the Caesars? Goodness gracious. Think about it. Now, if they were to be forgiven of sin, imagine if they were to be forgiven. When you get to heaven and you find out, I don't even want to say it. It sounds so horrendous to my heart. Hitler, before he got killed, dead, whatever it was, he accepted Christ as Savior and there he was. You get to heaven and you're just like, no way. No way. Well, what is it that constitutes in your head and your heart the ability to be so in awe of what God has done for you in that blip that you go, you know what? Nothing means anything anymore. Not my marriage, not my kids, not my business, nothing. Everything that I have now is yours, God's, because it's impossible for me to conceive that I would have continued to live my life the way I could, the way I would, the way I was, unless you had forgiven me. Is anybody yet understanding? Is anybody feeling what I'm saying yet? As I continue, you're going to see what I mean. 
let me continue. Verse 38. And stood at his feet, this woman with the alabaster box of ointment, behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with ointment. Now when the Pharisees, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, (laughs) he would know who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him. She's a sinner. The Pharisees sitting back there going, Oh my goodness. If he knew. Listen, I remember right after I got saved. Owen asked me to come and speak at his youth group. I had just gotten saved. I was brand new in the Lord. I had to be a couple months old, tops. Said some things that I didn't know later on I'd wind up saying in the church to these kids because I was just brand new. You know, I was just... But I remember this one kid, he kind of attached himself to me and he started talking to me. And later on, a couple of the other kids were there like, oh, sorry about that kid. I was like, I, I didn't understand what they meant at the time. I, I did not understand these kids thinking that this other kid was like the social outcast of the church, apparently. And everybody knew it. I didn't know. I didn't care. I thought the kid was kind of simple, but nice. Kind of like me. And this is the situation. So condescending they were. So religious about their life, these Pharisees were. So sure that if Christ knew where those hands were last. He certainly wouldn't want them touching him. You follow me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, and the one owed 500 pence and the other 50 pence. And when they had nothing to pay, He frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I I suppose that he whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. You're smart. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered in thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with her tears. What hope? It chokes me up. I'm telling you, it grabs me right in, the, right in the heart. What hope has offered to somebody so foul, so filthy in their sin, what hope this man can rescue me? What hope given to somebody who knows the depravity of their life? A pornographer, a drug addict, a pedophile, a murderer that carries this around in their heart, on their back, you know how many men you have been with. What hope. But something about this man said to this woman, he can release me from this bondage. He can take from me this pain. He can forgive me. So much so, she didn't care that the religious of the day were there. She goes in there. She weeps on his feet. She wipes his hair. I want you not to forget this is not a story. This is history. This is reality. This really happened. Thou gavest me no kiss, verse 45, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou did not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he saith unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, thy faith has saved thee, go in peace. 
Now, I want to go back now. You got Hitler, Mussolini. What would that man do? That person, knowing that same Savior. Listen, I'm sure. Conjecture, sanctified imagination, whatever you want to call it. I'm sure at just the right time, this possessed man who is Hitler, the enemy withdrew from his spirit to watch his destruction unfold, laughing hysterically at what he had just done, the people he had just destroyed, the lives he had just dismembered. You want to talk about the atrocities. I'm sure that the spirit, the same spirit they say, by the way, a very respected Bible scholar, I think it was even Chuck Smith has said, same spirit that had possessed Nero, possessed Hitler, for the hate for God's people was that intense. Step back out of the man. What woe now upon this man without a wicked spirit to lead and guide him. Now bearing that, <laughs> bearing that sin, the spirit of a man that only a demon, the devil himself, the Antichrist, could bear only. Now there is this wretch of a man bearing this sin. What his nights were until he departed to the gate of hell. What fits of wrath. What, what this man must have looked like. And nay, just for a second, because I felt the spirit. <laughs> that man took that same he held all of that shame and all of that pain and all of that woe and all of that misery and said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? With that weight so heavy, his heart encapsulated by a explosion. That's what it did to him. I can only imagine you think that this man, forgiven of those sins, let's say hypothetically again, and, and I, I'll say it as a man, I hope not, what if he was? What, how would this man walk around the rest of his days? How did this woman walk around the rest of her days? And then, how did those... Pharisees walk around. I'm about to turn this on you. Just bear with me because I turned it on myself all week. It's your turn. If you are an offering up in smoke, poured out, given over, you know what you've done. You, me, we are guilty of sins against God. So atrocious. So horrific. So horrible. And yet a Savior came, forgived you of your sin, and has set you not only free on earth, but offers you a place, an alternate path. Can you explain that? Well, I didn't ask for it. You didn't have to. Isn't that great? But if you come to church here, you got to know, I'm going to suggest you pour yourself, off like a, pour yourself out like a drink offering. you got to know that. Look, let, let me make it a little clearer scripturally before I close. Turn to Matthew 18, please, a few pages to the left. Matthew 18, we'll pick it up in the 23rd verse. Matthew 18 and 23. Our Lord Jesus, during the speaking, said, Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. Now, let's again spiritualize the text a little, which I try not to do too often because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to pervert the text. But what if the king came back, our king came back and said, Okay, guys, 
Let's take an account here what you've done with your life. And one by one, you go up to that great white throne and you have to make an account of what you did. And he says, I gave you life. I gave you a breath. I gave you finances. I gave you a wife or a husband. I gave you children. I gave, 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 gave. Finishing with, I gave you my son. Tell me what you did with it now. In light of this, that the 70 years that you lived is behind you, and now eternity stands in front of you. You knew it. You knew you only had 80 years. What does the Bible say? 80 80 years by reason of strength? You know this now. What are you doing with that time? Looking into eternity, when you make an accounting to God of how you spent your time, how do you go into eternity feeling pretty good about yourself? Knowing the way you just spent those 70 years. Knowing that you gave away your best treasures. Knowing that you did not use your strength for his glory. Knowing that at best, it was Pastor Raz Vasquez who said to me, Ryan, never forget. Please never forget. The best of men are at best men. And it was Ken Graves who said to me something that I'll never forget. And you want to talk about a life changer? I was with Marty when he said this to me, and you asked him how it changed me from the second I heard it. He said, Ryan, people are really hard to please. God's not hard to please. I thought to myself, man, you know, wow. Knowing that you have a God who's not hard to please, knowing all these things, how should you live your life? Look again, 18... Uh, 24. And when he had begun to reckon, one of his brought it unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. Now, if you have a Bible, you could circle 10,000 talents and just right next to it, forget about it. <laughs> forget about it. A talent is like 75 pounds. 75 pounds times 10 of gold. Like, forget about it. Like as in, you owed a price that you can't pay back. Like as in, forget about it. (laughs) You with me? But for as much as he had not to pay his Lord, commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. Give me your attention. You know, I've given you a lot. Let's just say a lot. I gave you a wife, I gave you children, I gave you stuff, and you didn't do anything with it that brought glory to me. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm taking it all back. And I'm throwing you in prison. Praise God that we live in a time of grace where he's not holding sins against us, where we could find ourselves saying, thank God I didn't live in the the book of Numbers. When I had to give this offering and that offering and that offering and that offering, we had a drink offering and a lamb offering and a ram offering and an ox offering and a meat offering and a a heave offering and a wave offering, and I haven't started yet. You know how many offerings? A lot. You don't. You know what God wants as an offering? You. He even calls you the apple of his eye. He even calls you the pearl of great price. He loves you. Oh my goodness. It had to be like a group deal. It had to be. He was getting all these folks over here, not those there, these over here. So he took me with them. And No. Isn't that the greatest thing? The Bible actually suggests that if you are the only one who needed salvation, he still comes to earth and dies for you. Verse 26, the servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion 
and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Now let's just say for a second, we also apply that text to what we do here on Sunday. And I say, hey, come to the Lord. He'll fix everything. He'll make everything okay. You can look at me now and lie to this and go, you're lying. You are offering a false gospel that does not exist. The gospel that does exist is offer him all. Because you owe it to him anyway. You want to be forgiven of your sins? Offer him all. Now, praise God that he doesn't come like that. Praise God that he says, no, I will woo you. This is so insane. Let me, let me explain something to you. How insane this is. Let me see. I can't save myself, but he offers me a way. I'm moving further away each day. He's walking toward me every day, closer and closer and closer. He touches me, woos me with bands of love, cords of graciousness, hope, and I go, I don't know if I should. What? There's some exchange here that hasn't met my heart yet. And I don't know. If I was walking this way, Lord, why are you following me? Let me go. He goes, no, I love you too much. Wait a second. You have all this to offer. It's like kids. This is my wife. Ready? Here's, Here's my wife. What do you want for dinner? 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 Okay, I'm going to make you this, you this, you this, you this. And they go, I don't want that. But you asked for it. But I don't want it now. I want what he's got. I want what she's got. And the Lord's like, are you kidding me? My wife is like, you know what? You make your own dinner. The Lord Jesus never says that. You know what he says? I will make you something else, no problem. Now, wait a second. Let me get this straight. You're feeding me what I need, what I desire, what I want, what I so desperately need. And now I'm going to tell you how to give it to me. (laughs) And you're okay with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, in light of where I am now in Christ, to light where I was, he knew I needed him to do that. But he shouldn't have had to do that. I should be able to weigh my own sin and go, are you kidding me? This is a no-brainer. I owe a debt I can't pay. He's willing to pay a debt he don't owe. Sounds like a winner to me. I'm a businessman. Buy low, sell high. Now, the guy was just forgiven 75 talents, Cindy. What do you think he's going to do? Did I say 75 times? 10 talents. 75 times 10. What do you think this dude's going to walk around with? Talk about the way to Hitler. Talk about the sin of the world. What do you think this dude's going to be like after this? The most graceful, loving, surrendered, whatever you want, God. He's going to see somebody else. They're going to cut him off in the car, and he's not going to, you know, he's going to be like, hey, no problem. Right? I know you guys know this stuff already. You guys are the Wednesday crowd. Then the Lord of that servant, verse 27, was moved with compassion, loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. You could circle that word and write, Five bucks, five bucks, 100 pence, five bucks to our day and age. And he laid his hands on him, took him by the throat, saying, pay me what thou owest me, or pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down on his feet, besought him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? So 
So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told their, unto their Lord all that was done. And his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest thou not also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth. I love that word. Reminds you of something foaming, right? Like a dog wroth. And delivered him up to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto thee, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one of his brother their trespasses. Please give me your attention. Let me. Who did that? It was you. Nice. Good job. See, you come here, you don't have a lot of people, but you get sound effects. <laughs> now, I don't want to shake anybody's salvation or anything like that, and I'm not telling you that because I believe I'm a once saved, always saved type of guy. Amen. But here it sounds like he's saying he saved the guy. The guy didn't do nothing with his salvation, so he unsaved him. Now, I ain't saying that to anybody here because I don't know any. I am not suggesting that this dude lost his salvation. Here's what I'm suggesting. He didn't realize how much salvation he had received. He was like that Pharisee. He said, you know who's touching you now, buddy? You know, I came in your house. You didn't offer me no water, no oil, no nothing. You gave me nothing. This woman, the sinner, she hasn't stopped. So I say... He who forgives much, loves much. I say, you don't understand how much you've been forgiven. Because the sins are not sins. They're sin. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Not sins. Sins are forgiven to any Christian who goes to 1 John 1.9 and says, after I've been saved, God... Forgive me again for my sins. He's already forgiven you for your sin in the acceptance of Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? Does anybody not get that? Finishing up. Offering up in smoke. Everything. How ought we live our lives? Let me tell you how we ought to live our lives. Everything that you have in your possession must be permeated with Christ. Everything. If you are here and you know that there is an area of your life, whether it be your business, your relationships, your sexuality, your children, what have you not completely given over to Christ in light of this, it don't matter how much you really do anyway from here on out. You're going to stand at that great white throne judgment and he's going to say to you, what did you do with what I gave you? And the only thing you're going to have time to do is take every crown, every throw it at his feet and go, nothing, God, I did nothing. Nothing. It's the love of Christ that compels me to give him every single day the whole deck of cards, the whole enchilada, to lay them before and to fight any fight I have to fight in order to make my house holy and to fight any fight I have to fight in order to make my business holy and to fight any fight I have to fight in order to make my children holy because these are the things that he gave me. And my Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He loved so he gave me what I needed, not what I wanted. I was running in the other direction. Thanks anyway. I got a great feast for you. I got a great banquet. Why don't you just pull up and eat? No thanks. I'm busy. I got pig slop to eat. Like, you're going to get indigestion, spiritual indigestion from that pig slop. Come and feast. Nah, it's okay. Then you tell him enough, no. You go, you eat the pig slop. You wind up spiritually in indigestion. You wind up burdened, bummed, beat up, beat down. You name it. And you come and say, would you take me now? And you know the only thing you see and hear is you see all elbows 
and knees running to you. Are you kidding me? With all that that gone on, and I've given you straight Bible tonight, let me tell you something. Here's my prayer tomorrow morning when I wake up in light of what I preach today. What have I not given you? What more? Tell me what. And we're not talking about praying. Well, I'm going to pray an extra half hour. I'm like, listen, keep your prayer. I got a better idea. Instead of praying for the extra half hour, call up your long lost brother, cousin, sister that doesn't know Christ and say, hey, I just want you to know that Jesus loves you. Oh, I hate that guy. He, she. Let it go. What area have you not surrendered? What dirty little secret? What dirty little secret? What do you do in the dark alone? What do you, what area of your life has the enemy gotten his foot in and you can't shut that, you cannot get it out? The Lord's not here to give you weakness upon weakness. You give him your weakness, he gives you his strength. It's a great trade, man. It's not only do you get heaven, but you get strength on earth. Offering, offering, offering. Would you come and play a song that has something to do with offerings? Got something? I ain't got nothing. Um... Just play a song, man. Stop giving me. Huh? Got a song about surrender. Surrender. I surrender all to. Listen, sing it, not just like you mean it, but like you want to mean it. Let me pray, and then Dustin, closing song, please. Father, I thank you so much for the visual, not the vision of how much I've been forgiven. Hitler, he got nothing on me, God. I am foul and weak and dirty and hurting and in pain. For your word says that you made the eye and the ear. And you also, your word says, does he that not madest the ear, shall he not hear you? He that madest the eye, shall he not see you? God, I hate that verse. I hate that verse. Because that means you've heard everything I've said and seen everything I've done. And I don't want you to see. I don't want you to see me. And I don't want you to hear me. I want to be holy. But I don't want to act holy. I just want to be holy. Oh, God, help us. These things that I desire to do, I don't do. And that which I don't want to do, that I wind up doing. Who can rescue us from this body of death? Thanks be to God. Thank you, God, that you are hope. That you are light. And that you are freedom. And that you are forgiveness. And that you are strength. Thank you, God. Thank you. As we sing, help me to sing like the saved, like the redeemed, the song of the redeemed. You reign. Glory, glory, you reign. Amen. I lay it all down 
sake of you, my king, I'm giving you my dreams. I'm laying down my rights. I'm giving up my pride for the promise of you.
Help us by your spirit, we pray. That the first thing that we do when we wake up in the morning is we seek your face. We humble ourselves. God, we ask once again for forgiveness and the strength to forgive those who have sinned against us. God, I have been forgiven so much. Who do I think I am not to forgive others? God, I pray that when we sin, not if, Lord, it's when, because we will. Or that is when someone sins against us that we would immediately extend grace and forgiveness that we wouldn't sin against them in return but the same kind of grace and mercy that has been extended to us we would offer to all because you forgave us 